Hey guys, um, I know it's been ages since I made a video, um, and I'm, I can only apologize for that. I haven't been answering comments, I haven't even been thinking about making new videos, and it's that much worse, because in my last video, I was talking about how many more I plan to make. Um, sometimes life gets in the way, what can I say? Um, work life is very complicated right now. You know, I'm teaching a handful of classes at a university, still selling wine uh, three to four days a week. And, you know, I'm trying to write my book, and there's just other things in my mind. Um, as fun as it is to share stuff with people on YouTube like this, uh, it's just not at the top of my list right now. Um, but I did want to come back today and share something that I purchased with you um, that I've been waiting to get for a long time. And I'm very excited to have it waiting for me when I got home from school today. Uh, quick wristwatch check, because I know most of you follow my channel because of that. I'm wearing... My little glycine airman number one reissue. Um, this is probably getting the most wrist time of my collection right now. I probably wear the 60 to 65 percent of the time. Um, but anyway, as you can see, um, I bought a handmade leather belt from the UK. Um, quick story, uh, long story short, I suppose. I'm very, very thin, I'm very thin framed. Uh, I'm about six feet tall, and I have a 28-inch waist, which has been roughly my dimensions, both height and waist, uh, since I was 16, 17. Um, and because of that, it's always been very hard for me to buy pants that fit, um, which leads to me wearing a belt all the time. But of course, it's also hard to find belts that fit. Um, I have my old brown belt with me here. I was wearing it today. Um, I've had this belt since I was a teenager. Um, because it fits me, but not only is it really beat to hell, um, as you can see, it's just not a very nice belt, it's not very nice leather, it's starting to peel and flake and, and really just looks crappy, to be honest, it's discolored on the keepers, um, and it's gotten to the point where not only it, do I not particularly like it because it's so beat up, it just doesn't look good if I'm wearing a shirt tucked in without a jacket or a sweater on, um, so I decided to order a nice belt for myself, something I've always wanted. Um, and I landed on this company that I discovered online. Um, this is a belt from a master saddler in Devon, um, which is somewhere in England. I'm sorry, I don't know England very well. Um, I've only been once. Uh, well, I don't know. But here you can see the top of the invoice that I got. Jasper Hyatt uh, is his name, assuming I'm saying that correctly. And he's part of the Society of Master Saddlers. Um, but of course I don't ride horses. Um, so I bought a belt from him, or rather than a saddle. Um, this is about as handmade and bespoke and old world as you can get. I mean, if you look at my invoice, this is literally just a handwritten pen on paper invoice, even though I did order it online. I mean, this is, you know, 2018 after all. Um, and then here is the belt itself. I wasn't going to originally make a video on this, but I, I already opened it and I took a whiff of the inside. And I don't know, it, it's just amazing. Um, I work in the wine industry, as you know, and people speak about terroir, right? Expressing a place, um, expressing the winemaker, the actual people throughout the process, you know, um, touching the grapes, harvesting, etc., expressing the soil. Um, and I feel like a lot of art is like that. In a world where everything's digitized, everything's a consumer product, um, the stuff that really makes me happy, that I really get excited about, expresses something human, about the human condition, right? Um, whether it's a painting and you can see the brush strokes or whether it's a, an essay or a novel and you can feel the mind of that person working or a piece of recorded music and you hear the sliding on the fretboard of a guitar. I like to know that a human being actually made and created the thing. I mean, that's why I wanted to share this with you. Anyway, here's a box it comes in. Um, of course, it came from England, so it was all wrapped up for shipping. But... Um, Hemi Leather Belts by Jasper Hyatt, made in Devon. You can see some images there. They're also on the website. Um, and uh, this is what's called oak bark leather, which is, a, I guess, a certain finishing process. Um, and the leather for this comes from, does it say here? It says inside. It's the, the only oak bark, um, what is the right word, leathery? I don't know what the right word is for that. But the only one left in England. Um, just because it's a slower, more expensive, more um, painstaking way to treat leather. Um, and they mention on here a few things. Made from natural grain oak bark, tanned bridle butts, um, 4 to 5.5 millimeters in thickness. Hand stitched with handmade thread using solid brass buckles. Um, 
you know, you can choose your buckles, um, like color and style and everything. And then it comes in three colors. You can order natural brown, which is what I have here, black, um, which I may order another one when I have the money for it, or light oak, which is sort of more of a cognac color. And they mention, because the natural grain is not corrected by destroying the surface of the leather and applying a uniform finish, as is the case with virtually all leather these days, the weave or grain gives each individual belt its own unique finish. Let's open this up. So inside, um, nicely presented if you're buying this as a gift, you have the belt obviously wrapped up and this little um, information sheet, uh, handmade leather belts by Jasper Hyatt, um, oak bark belts, naturally tanned in Devon, the only remaining oak bark tannery in Britain, which is pretty amazing. And there's a picture of the tannery there um, where this came from. And it says, the slow oak bark tanning method developed before Roman time creates a unique leather showing the natural grain and any scars or marks which happened during the natural life of the hide and also during the hand tanning process. And they give you some aftercare information. Your belt needs feeding before use and every few months depending on use. This nourishes, softens, and preserves the leather. Leather balm should be applied liberally to the back and sparingly to the front surface. Rub well and, uh, a little strange the word there, Rub in well with a soft cloth or your fingers. When absorbed, polish with a dr clean, dry cloth. If the leather becomes dry, a saddle oil, such as Neat's foot oil, can be applied. The top surface can be enhanced with a good quality shoe polish and brushing. The color of the leather will darken with the application of oils. And if you like this and would like to get your own, handmadeleatherbelts.co.uk. And this is as bespoke as a belt really can get, I suppose, at, you know, at a reasonable price point made to your measurements you get to say what size you want it gives measuring instructions you can pick the the width of the belt like how big you want the belt to be obviously the color the buckle um, you can pick whether you want bridal stitching or just a plain flat leather and whether you get the oak bark stamp on it or not which is traditional for this, this kind of tannery anyway the belt comes wrapped in this blue paper um, and unfortunately we don't have smell of vision here um, but if you pull this out and take out the extra stuff, you see the belt is wrapped in this rubber band, stamped with the optional oak bark leather Colton Devon stamp. And when I smelled this when I first opened it, I expected it to smell um, like manufactured leather, that really nice leather smell, but it actually doesn't. It smells like hay. It smells like, like a barnyard, like wet hay and animals. Um, and I'm sure that'll, you know, as the wine people say, blow off with a little air. But it's amazing. Um, to me, that is, like, that's the most human touch you can get on a product like this. You know, I, I ordered this a week, two weeks ago from England, and it came to me in the mail. I can still smell the, like, farm and the tannery that it came from. It's, it's incredible. Uh, but anyway, let me try with my limited space here to give you a look at it. Um, you can see here the buckle. This is the, I think they called it the West End roller style or something, you know, the, the dressier style that they offer. Here's the, the stitching with the handmade thread. And my belt size is 30. Um, usually your belt size is two inches larger than your, your like pants size, your waist size. So I wear a size 28 waist, so a 30 in a belt. You can see this is the saddle. Um, uh, like crimped option. You can see that there's the line on either side. Oops, sorry. And the natural brown finish. And you can see it is, um, you know, sort of it shows the cracks and the wear and the, the, you know, character of each piece of leather that's used. And there's that stamp again. And on the back side, um, it's stamped with the saddler's name who made it, Jasper Hyatt. Colton, which is where it came from, and there's just the natural back leather, um, which is what most needs the balm and the oil, apparently. Um, there's not much else to show you other than just what comes inside the sort of gift presentation box when you order it. They give you a nice stamped key fob. Uh, mine is in black, which is kind of cool. I'll probably attach my keys to this because I have my, <laughs> my dad's old keychain rather than my own. Um, and they give you a small container of leather balm made from beeswax and jojoba, or jojoba, I don't know how to say it. Um, you can opt for a larger container if you want to just, a, it's a small upcharge when you order the belt. 
I just went for the small one because um, I have I actually have like leather trading uh, products for my shoes. Um, but you can opt for a larger one if you want. And that's it. Um, it's pretty simple. It's sort of meant to be. You know, it's not a complicated thing. Um, they are fairly expensive if you're interested in ordering one. I mean, so far, highly recommended. I haven't worn it yet, obviously. Um, but it's, I mean, it's thick, beautiful leather. It smells, again, like, like hay, like a barnyard. Um, and it's handmade by a master of his craft using um, techniques and leather finishing that is kind of going extinct, um, which I think is important to preserve those sort of human handcrafting skills in any field, um, you know, leather, music, books, watches, whatever. Um, but I think this was about 80 pounds plus like 16 pounds shipping, which in dollars ended up being like roughly 120 or 130. I don't remember exactly what the exchange was when I ordered, but it's pretty expensive. Um, and the, the price does change a little bit based on the width of the belt you order and how much leather it takes. Um, so like, you know, one quarter, one and one quarter inch is cheaper than a one and one half inch and, and so on and so forth. Um, but they're all in the kind of 75 to 90 pound range. Um, if you can afford it and you're looking for a new belt and you want something that fits you and is beautifully handcrafted by somebody, um, so far I can only recommend it. I'm really happy with this purchase. Thanks so much. Um, I'll see you guys sometime in the future. It might be a while. Have a good one. Goodbye.